You are watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're talking about breast cancer prevention. And with us, we have an expert on the topic. And, and specifically, we're talking about if you have a genetic predisposition to breast cancer, should you go and get a mastectomy? Or double mastectomy. With us, we have board certified general surgeon, board certified plastic surgeon, uh, author of a great book, Dr. Christine Horner. Dr. Horner, welcome to the program. Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, for, for people that don't know, I mean, you uh, helped and you met with the president mm -hmm. on getting breast reconstruction covered by insurance. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your background training. How do you get from uh, a plastic surgeon to being this full time educator and spokesperson? Sure. So most of us in Western medicine that have a clue, you suddenly will realize that there's something wrong with the way you practice medicine. Okay. It's not picking, making people well. But um, you know, I did a lot of breast reconstruction in my practice, and I was watching my patients get younger and younger until finally- Younger I was, and younger getting the procedure, you mean? Yeah, okay. until finally I was doing women in their 20s. And I thought, you know, something's way wrong. For mastectomy? For mastectomies okay. with reconstruction. So it's like, okay, why is this happening? Why does it happen in the United States, whereas in, in Japan or in Asia there's a very low incidence so I went through the medical research to take a look at it and lo and behold what did I find you know everything's about our diet and lifestyle huge statistical influence in fact there's things that almost everything that I looked at that has an influence cuts the risk in half if you do more than one thing those things will multiply up together they don't add up together so these studies by the way so you, mm -hmm. you're looking at populations of people yes. with the lowest incidence of breast cancer yes and what are they eating is exactly. that right okay so what we're looking at is that you know it's it's easy to see why people in asia have a much lower incidence and um, is it and that why much it's lower? very high oh my goodness it's like 10 times lower but if they move here so if an asian person moves here to the united states and adopts our american diet and lifestyle within one generation their risk will match that of an american woman so it's like, hello, you know, what are they okay. doing or, or, and you know, what are we doing or not doing this making such a big difference? And, it, and it's right there in the medical research that shows. Okay, this gene, mm -hmm. I have a memory. What, what, what's the name of this the gene? The BR, so that's breast, okay. <laughs> CA, yeah. cancer. C the BRCA1 gene is kind of the main one. There's a BRCA2 gene too, but Angelina Jolie really brought this to the forefront because she was diagnosed with the BRCA1 gene. So should a woman get this done? a mastectomy if mm -hmm. they have that gene, and does it really decrease their chances substantially or eliminates the chance of them ever getting breast cancer? That's, that's my question. Last question first, which okay. is yes. I mean, if you take the tissue out, you know, the incidence of developing cancer and it becomes much lower, like 5% or so. Now, what's interesting is that currently the statistics are that 80% of women with the BRCA1 gene will develop breast cancer by the time they're 80. But you know, when they looked back in the family lineage of BRCA1 gene mutation families, 100 years ago, the incidence was 23%. Well, why the heck is that? Because everything that influences the risk of developing breast cancer for the BRCA1 genes is exactly what it is for the regular population. So everything I wrote about in my book, as far as all the natural approaches, the foods, the supplements, the lifestyle, all of those things affect those women too. Now the other thing that's really fascinating is that there's a number of studies that have been done specifically on the BRCA1 gene and seeing what affects that gene. So one of the greatest studies done, a double-blinded placebo-controlled study, so this is our gold standard done in okay. Europe, of BRCA1 gene mutation women. Now that BRCA1 gene governs tumor suppression. So it codes for proteins that will suppress the growth of tumors. And also it works for DNA repair. So our DNA is getting injured all the time from toxins, radiation, you name it. We have uh, mechanisms in our body to help repair it. But if you have a BRCA1 gene mutation, those repair mechanisms don't work like they should. So they look at the blood of the women with the BRCA1 gene mutation and they find all these little fragments of DNA that didn't get repaired. And they found that selenium, so a simple mineral, it costs nothing, selenium is involved in that repair okay. mechanism. They said, okay, so let's give half the women selenium, we'll give half the women a placebo, and let's see what happens. Well, in two years, they look at their blood and they find that all the DNA fragments are exactly, have repaired, you know, so they're the same in a normal person. Interesting. And the incidence of breast cancer in those women taking selenium was 200% lower. Okay. Omega-3 fatty acids affect the BRCA1 gene. Cruciferous vegetables directly affect so the BRCA1 gene. So if you have that gene, gene, 
are you convinced that if you treat it with nutrition, mm -hmm. like you talk about it in the book, uh -huh. and you have a list of supplements, yes. that if you, that you don't have to get the Exactly, because if you have, let's just say, you know, 100 years ago, because of our food supply, you change that, you, you reduce your risk to 23%. Well, your risk is 23%, the likelihood that you're not, you know, that you're not gonna get it is like 80%, right? Now, if you're doing the key supplements, that you know, research shows directly affects that gene and eliminates a lot of the problems, your incidence is gonna be back to what the normal population is. And you can use non-radiation techniques like ultrasounds and okay. thermography to follow. If there's anything that shows up, you get it right away before so it becomes So there are some women that are getting this done that don't have to be. Absolutely. Okay, but, but, mm -hmm. but and I think we talked a little bit about this on the phone, but, but if a woman, mother died of breast cancer, mm -hmm. so it's very touchy. Yes. She has two children. Yes. She's looking at them in their eyes. Uh -huh. And she's been diagnosed with breast cancer. Yes. Early stage. Yes. I could see where she would go in and say, maybe I need, and mm -hmm. she has that gene. Mm -hmm. She wants to get it done. Right. So. Because she wants to see her kids grow up. There's a lot that goes into that decision. It's very individual. And for Angelina Jolie, I always say, you know what? We don't know her medical history. Maybe she had multiple breast biopsies. Maybe she had pre-malignant disease. But one of the greatest influences about what you need to do to take care of somebody is their emotional state. So she watched her mother die and she was very yeah. traumatized by it. And I've had patients, I mean, every day they wake up and they go, is this the day it's going to get me? So they're completely incapacitated about so their So for those fear. people, it's a good idea. For those people, you give them their life back when you do surgery and you give them peace of mind. So there is a place for that. Okay. But I mean, the goal would be to eliminate it, to, to, to stack the odds in your favor Correct. to not get breast cancer. Yes. So eat a plant-based diet, mm -hmm. things like wild salmon if you're going to have protein, Sure. Uh -huh. clean, clean protein, and in vegetables and take some of the supplements they know that kills the cancer right. or, or makes it uh -huh. tough for the cancer to grow. Yes. And you probably won't get it. Right, or any other disease. And, you know, the side benefit is that you have extraordinary health and you have the opportunity for the most joy out of life. Okay, good. Now what about, just vitamin D for a second, mm -hmm. because sunblock is all over the place. Correct. Uh, people are, you know, humans, early humans, everybody got sun. Mm -hmm. Now they don't get the sun. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts and how D3 affects breast cancer, prostate cancer, mm -hmm. any cancer? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, What do people need to know about There's actually been an explosion of research in vitamin D in the last several years and they found that it acts more like a hormone and affects hundreds of different genes. And now we're reversing ourselves, you know, I know people love that when the doctors reverse themselves, but they found that people who are using sunblock are actually getting a higher incidence of cancer because the vitamin D is something that helps to protect you from getting cancer. So you have to be smart about it if you get some sun. Actually, now we're saying go out in the middle of the day. We're used to say don't do that. Um, and getting um, at least 30 minutes of sunlight. Then but on your face, you could cover that with sunblock. You could, yeah. But you know, exposing yourself as much as you can, then okay. you're manufacturing a very high level of vitamin D. And in most people that have all sorts of disease conditions from multiple sclerosis Depression, to Parkinson's, everything. everything, vitamin D levels are low. So, so what's your dose for vitamin D? And should you always take a test first? Um, it's ideal because okay. there is no standardized dose to give to somebody. The general recommendation is about 2,000 international units, but it really depends on what your blood levels are. Some people need way more than that to begin with, um, and some people need less. So it really has to be kind of customized. Okay, and we're out of time, but I want people to also know this. For early detection, mm -hmm. a woman is worried about breast cancer. Yes. You don't like mammograms. I I'm don't. not putting words in your mouth here. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you like ultrasound, correct? Thermography, yes. like a combination, uh -huh. and then a professional to examine the breast. And the own person, you know, to feel okay. too, because most breast cancers are found by the patients. It's like, okay, great. Then we obviously need to encourage women to continue doing that. What if their doctor says, no, there's no mm -hmm. research on thermography? Mm -hmm. Well, ultrasound then... is not going to give you this type of what you need. Well, I would just direct them to the studies that show that that is in fact not true. <laughs> there's hundreds of thousands of, there's a million mammograms probably That's right. being done uh -huh. a year, yes. more than that, right. in the U.S. Yes. It's a money industry. Are they all wrong? Industry. It's an insurance? It's a money industry. But it's not, do you think it's a, it's, it, it's a conspiracy or you think they just don't know any no, better? No, I think it's big business. You know, so lots the of things. The doctors, you don't think know any better? Mm, the doctors are trained. 
You know, so let's say that in medical school, they say that, that um, the medical students, when they start in their first year, the 75% of them are open to alternative medicine. By their senior year, only 25% are. It's an indoctrination and a fear because of the, you know, legal actions that can be taken. We have 75% of the world's, you know, attorneys here in the United States. So people, you know, go out of fear. They don't want to do anything outside of the box, and they don't really think and, and investigate on their own. Okay, good. Oh, well, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for coming on the show. And if somebody wants to find out more about you, they go to yes. your website. Mm -hmm. You have a blog. You have a great book. I do. And, uh, you know, this is the book, by the way. And where can they get this book? So um, it actually was number one on Amazon, so Amazon.com. Or if you want an autographed copy, you can get it from my website, which is DrChristineHorner.com. And Andrew Weil yes. gave his uh, blessing on it. Uh -huh. He right. did, yeah. So good. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Good, good for you. Thanks. Take, you know, quitting uh -huh. your plastic surgery practice to do this. Thank you. So congratulations. Thank you. And we have to have you back to talk about some other things. I'd love to. All right. You've been watching the Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We'll be right back.